Hello and welcome to Katie and Danny's Conversation, a series of videos dedicated to all things mental health and well-being. And we're here with someone very special today, uh, Norman Lamb, who is Minister for Care and Support in That's the right. Coalition Government, um, and also has been an influential voice within Parliament um, for people who suffer from mental health problems. So it's a pleasure to have you here today. A great pleasure to be here. Thank you for joining yeah, us. So um, thank you very much for your um, work in mental health and being uh, such a champion in the health and wellbeing space. Um, so just going to start with this question. Uh, do you have any personal experiences of mental ill health? Not myself, but within my family. Yeah. Uh, and uh, first of all, our oldest son, Archie, uh, who's mm -hmm. now 29, was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder at the age mm -hmm. of 16. Um, and we went through years of, sort of emotional turmoil, really, mm -hmm. uh, as a result of that. We were let down by the NHS, you know, uh, left waiting far too long. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> the truth, of course, is that when we were desperate, we were able to afford to get treatment, pr private treatment. Yeah. But there are very many people who can't do that. Mm -hmm. And that's, in a way, what makes me so driven to uh, improve the situation that we have in this country. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's really helpful. Thanks for sharing that. So what, what do you do then to maintain positive mental health for yourself? Uh, I'm not sure I'm always very uh, <laughs> disciplined uh, in that regard. I don't get enough sleep. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, with this job, you can end up just working all hours God gave you yeah, uh, yeah. and sort of seven days a week. Mm -hmm. So that's not good for your uh, mental health and well-being. Mm -hmm. uh, but I try to avoid uh, drinking alcohol during the week. Yeah. Um, and I think that helps quite a bit. Mm -hmm, I try to go for a run every Sunday yep. um, and I walk a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been walking around Birmingham today yeah, yeah. in the beautiful sunshine. Yeah. Well, obviously you've done a huge amount of work on mental health. Um, can you just tell us a bit about your work? Well, um, so I became a minister in the Department of Health in uh, September 2012. Um, and I just thought, I've got a period now, the election's going to be in 2015, so I've got sort of two and a half years to try and actually achieve something. And I happened to be a minister for a subject that I cared a lot about. So I was responsible for mental health, for learning disability, for autism, and for sort of integrated care, trying to join up the health and care system more effectively, and care for elderly people. So it's quite a big... Uh, area of responsibility. Massive portfolio. Yeah, so um, in the coalition agreement we'd uh, agreed to massively expand access to psychological therapies. This is the what's called the IAPT program, mm. increasing access to psychological therapies. And I had to sort of get that back on track because it was drifting a little bit. We had to maintain a national team which was about to be disbanded and I insisted that it was maintained. But we got to that target of tripling the number of people who uh, got access. It, it's still not enough, but it was, I think, progress. We rolled out uh, a national programme of what's called liaison and diversion. This is to capture people when they go into the criminal justice system, when they're in a court or a police station. If they have an underlying mental health problem, get them diverted into diagnosis and treatment. I suppose, finally, the thing that I was most determined to achieve, and I suppose I'm very proud of, is introducing the first maximum waiting time standards in mental health. So for early intervention in psychosis, um, you should start your treatment within two weeks. Uh, but it was not just starting treatment, it's getting the full evidence-based treatment package. Yeah. My, again, my frustration is that n insufficient investment is being made across the country. So people are starting treatment on time, but they're not getting the full package. And mm. would that ever happen with cancer care or with any other physical mm. health problem? So it's this awful discrimination against mental health within mm. the NHS. Mm -hmm. No, no, definitely. Um, and there's a lot more to do. Yeah. Um, but the work you've done has definitely moved us forward. So, thank you, uh, I appreciate so that kind comment. Much. What do you think the major issues are still remaining in mental health care in this country? Well, people wait far too long for treatment. Uh, they're often met by very high thresholds mm. so for example you might be a teenager with an eating disorder mm -hmm. and you're referred by your GP and the service says uh, sorry you, your BMI your body mass index isn't low enough mm. so it's sort of like saying go away and get sicker and then we might help yeah. you but I guess fundamentally the most important shift that needs to happen is towards much more emphasis on prevention mm -hmm. working in schools stopping the deterioration of people's mental health and well-being in the first place 
if you could stop the flow of people who need formal treatment by providing them with better support earlier on, then everybody, everyone benefits. So I think the work that Altruist Enterprises does in schools is incredibly valuable. Um, I, I think it's brilliant what you're doing. I, I love social enterprise. It's, yeah. a, it's my favourite form of organisation. Yeah. I think it should be spread much more across the NHS actually. Um, because I think you get more bangs for your bucks, uh, yeah. you achieve amazing things, um, but your work in workplaces is fantastic yeah. and, and will save money in the long run, mm -hmm. but using the money you earn to get into schools and to help schools is just very inspiring. Thank you very much, thank you. Um, and I know you wanted to talk about the, uh, the current three million pound investment that's been put into you. Um, schools. I wanted to hear what you thought about that. Um, do you think it's enough? Do you think the government's gone far enough on that? So, um, I think the <coughs> uh, Children's uh, Mental Health Green Paper um, all makes sense. Mm. Uh, my frustration is that it's uh, like um, sort of two and a bit years on from the blueprint that we published, which is called Future in Mind. Yes. Yeah. Um, and rather than publish another discussion document two years on, mm -hmm. just implement what we decided two years ago. Mm. Yeah. And it feels to me, I'm, this might sound cynical, but it feels to me like if they publish a green paper and they talk about mental health, it, it makes the public think that they're doing something. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas actually they should have put much more effort into achieving the transformation that we set out two years ago in Future of Mind. What else needs to be done, do you think, to help prevent mental illness in the wider population? Well, I think, I mean, part of it is about time to, the Time to Change campaign, mm -hmm. uh, which you might have come across. This yeah. is uh, partly government funded, partly from comic relief, mm -hmm. but the idea is to just get people to openly talk about mm -hmm. their uh, mental health issues. Mm -hmm. So a lot of Politicians, business people, people in sport and music have all come out and talked about it. Our son has come on, you know, on national television with me and talked about his experience. Yeah. And I think every time someone does that, it just makes it a little bit easier for someone to seek help. And I think the other message to just anyone who's watching mm -hmm. is if you know someone who you think is going through a difficult time, yeah. talk to them. Yeah. Don't be embarrassed about it, just talk to them. Mm. Uh, because that might just get it open in, uh, you know, into the open. It might enable them to seek help. Uh, not talking about it, this sort of conspiracy of silence, mm -hmm. results in too many people deteriorating uh, without help, and sometimes tragic things happen. Mm -hmm. okay. I guess maybe one of the concerns is the more people that open up about it is fantastic, and that's great. But one of the biggest concerns is then that means more people trying to get help, of and course. they can't get that support. Yeah. Then where do we go after that? Well, it does uh, sort of, in a way, reveal mm -hmm. the problem yes. to, uh, to, to its real extent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I suppose the way I put it is that, you know, it's been estimated that the cost to the economy and to society of mental ill health is, is supposed to be about £105 billion pounds every year. Mm -hmm. So the cost of not doing it um, is enormous. Mm -hmm. So my view very firmly is that if you do invest more resource in, particularly in prevention of ill health, uh, stopping people deteriorating in the first place, uh, then you'll get a, in cold economic terms, you'll get a return on your investment. Mm. Government will save money in the long run yeah. and you transform lives. Yeah, invest to save. Sounds yeah, very exactly. Good. Yeah. And, you know, our own son's uh, story is that Yes, the challenges are still there. Um, yes, you know, he has to fight um, uh, against uh, the pressures, um, but uh, he's in a better place. He's working, he's got a good relationship, uh, and, uh, and it is uh, often possible to achieve that. Uh, you can't generalise, but I think, you know, uh, opening up, seeking help uh, is the best way forward. Fantastic. Well, that's really powerful, thank you. And thank you for uh, joining us today. Um, it's so been a great as, pleasure. Thank you. So as a thank you, um, we've got you a, a little present. Oh my goodness. Which is... Wasn't expecting this. You get your own. <laughs> your very own altruist T-shirt. This is fantastic. How about that? 
That yeah. is wonderful. You must feel like you're signing for a football team. Yeah, no, there. absolutely. <laughs> it's a bit too much like Manchester City. As a Norwich City fan, it, well, of course, I would of prefer course. it in yellow and green, but it's, it's very smart. It's okay. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's brilliant.